Welcome back to the audio workshop. In this part we're going to establish a time update event handler for our audio object, which is going to serve two purposes in the particular application we have built so far. This event handler will allow us to show current play time against the full duration time, and it will also allow us to update the position of our seek slider knob, so as the audio plays, the seek knob moves along with the audio by itself. We're going to continue our audio project with the same script we left off with at the end of the last video. That was video 2. Now the first thing we'll do is add the HTML. That's going to be a little time box. It's going to show the current play time against the full duration time. So right after the seek slider, I'm going to put it in between my seek slider and my mute button. All right, so here's the element that's going to be our time box. It's a div with an ID of time box, and inside of it, there's two span elements. One of these span elements has an ID of current time text. The next span has an ID of duration time text. Now you can target those IDs with JavaScript, and that's how we're going to update the current time text. Okay, that's all the HTML. Now let's go up into our style element, expand it, and but right before we're putting all the hack some workarounds for the range slider appearance and right underneath the volume sliders code I'm gonna pop in the following rule and what we're doing is affecting a div on the page with an ID of time box we're making its display inline block that way it displays along with everything all the other little components that we've placed so far and it doesn't take up a whole block we want it to display inline block the width of the little time box is going to be 80 pixels. The background is black. And actually, we can remove this border bottom now. The text align is set to center. And this is the color of the text that you want in it. And then you set your font family and your font size. Now, if we take a look at what that renders, see, there's the time box. All of the text in it is centered, and it's the color we want. Now, you see how everything is placed, and it's not very even on the page there? What I'm going to do in the next video is show you how to place all of those components in this cool little skin. And we'll make sure everything is aligned in there just right, nice and even through the center. Okay, so let's collapse our CSS back up because we're done with that. And now all we have to do is place the JavaScript. So let's open up our JavaScript. Now the first thing we'll do in our JavaScript is initialize variables needed for the current time text and the duration time text. Then where we're setting object references, let's go ahead and add the object references. So for current time text and duration time text, we use document.getElementById and we're targeting those elements down on the page here, those span elements. Now this is the important bit. We're going to go down into where we're adding event handling and we're going to put an event listener in place for the audio object itself. And that event is the time update event. So whenever the time is updated for the audio, which is a automatic internal process that the audio has, and this function instructs the seek time update function that we're going to write. And this function instructs our seek time update function to run. And we're going to write that function in just a second. Actually, I think you can set up this handler like the mouse move where you just call the function by name directly there and you don't need to wrap it in a function but all right now let's go down into our functions where the last one is for the set volume and we're going to type in function seek time update make sure we open and close curly braces what the seek time update function does it's going to help us populate the time for the current time text and the duration time text but the current time is going to follow the playhead and our little seek slider knob needs to also follow the playhead or the audio's current time. So the first thing we'll do is create a variable in this function and this is called NT short for new time. NT stands for new time. And we're going to make that equal to the audio dot current time property multiplied by 100 divided by the audio dot duration property. So these are two more properties that you can access for the audio object. So current time and duration are two properties that you can just access for the audio objects. And really it's just simple math happening in this line. You're multiplying here 
and this is division. And these are simple numbers. Now the very next thing we're going to do after we get the new time is we're going to set the seek slider knob. So you take the seek sliders value property you make it equal to the new time. That will move your little slider knob automatically. The next thing we're going to do in this function is set some variables that are going to represent the current minutes, current seconds, the duration minutes, and the duration seconds. And that's also simple math that we're performing on the current time property and the duration time property. It's very simple. The audio.duration property and the audio.current time property. And we're using simple math on those again. Now the next thing we're going to do is make sure we put zeros in front of any numbers that might happen to be single character or single digits. So if you have a 1 or a 2, you want to put a 0 in front of that. You don't have to, but it seems to be a common thing that all audio and video players have. And all that takes is four little condition statements. You can use the ternary operator, or you can use little if conditions like I have here. And my if conditions are saying if the current sex is less than 10, that means 1 through 9, it's a single digit, then you're going to make the current sex equal to 0 plus current sex. Same for the duration sex. If the duration sex is less than 10, then you add a 0 in front of the duration sex. And you're doing the same thing for the minutes for both of those. Okay, the last two lines we're going to need in this function are current time text that inner HTML is equal to the current minutes plus a little colon symbol and the current seconds. And the duration time text inner HTML is going to be equal to the duration minutes colon duration seconds. Now let's make sure we have a working application. Alright. So you can see we have the full duration time and the current playtime is rolling along with the audio. Now let me go ahead and scrub the audio. See? When it gets to the end, it's going to loop. And there you have it. Now you have duration time and current playtime. And you can see that your little seek sliders knob is moving along with the playhead all by itself. Alright, now I can collapse up my JavaScript again. And we'll end the video right here and we'll pick up in the next video where we're going to show you how you can set all of your little audio and components into your own little custom skin. So really the next video is going to be a lot of discussion about design aspects. And I'll show you how I put together this little custom skin.